Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to talk about something that is probably impacting you or someone in your life. And I don't like to use cliches, but it explains it. Vicious cycle. And we keep going back to the same things, the same bad habits, and never feel like we're moving forward. Why do we do that? And if you think about it, maybe you have one. Maybe you're doing the same thing and going back again. You move a little bit ahead, then you're back again. What's behind that? We need to talk to a professional about that. She is an amazing psychologist and has helped so many people. I've learned so much along the way. She's also an author, has some fantastic books and workbooks. She's Dr. Ann Creekmore, and she's back with us. Welcome, Ann. How are you doing? Great, Steve. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. And I didn't realize that this is connected to chapter one in your book, Love Your Life, Love Yourself. I always got to, is it Love Yourself, Love Your Life? That is it. Correct. Uh (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. Chapter one. Um, My book is kind of about most of the effective uh, types of therapy and kind of your chapters devoted to each one. And the first chapter is actually called the self-fulfilling prophecy because it's the most effective form of therapy is cognitive behavioral therapy, cognitive meaning your thoughts and um, and how your thoughts create your feelings and then how you behave and then the outcomes. And um, Mm -hmm. so Yes. So it's really our thoughts and we have to catch them, you know, if they're negative to change them to the positive, to be encouraging them so that we can grow into the good versus feel limited. And a lot of our cognitions, our thoughts are subconscious or unconscious as well. So Mm -hmm. certain things like from our childhood or certain um, decisions, we've kind of made default decisions. We hold these unconscious self-limiting beliefs and we don't even know what they are, but they're still our thoughts. They're still, you know, creating the self-fulfilling prophecy. So a lot of it is figuring out what is it that we're thinking or what are our, is our underlying subconscious beliefs that are create, recreating all the time, the same vicious cycle in our lives. So, that's some of the things that we don't know that we're doing. Then you have things that we're aware of. Yes. Uh, you know, I know someone that will, you know, it's had challenges and there was some addiction challenges back in the day, which mm-hmm. is all connected to this as well. But mm-hmm. he'll move his life forward financially and then derail and just like trip up. You know, he works in the construction industry. Um, and the other day, lost his phone, then the truck, and then uh, they've got a problem here, got a problem there. And then, now we're back. Now we're back. And and then he fixes those things. Mm-hmm. And then he gets a couple of jobs and then makes makes money. And like, things are okay. You know, sometimes takes his foot off the pedal. And I get that. You, sometimes you need a little time to yourself. But then maybe he gets back into bad habits. And now we're back again. We're taking you know, three steps forward, the five steps back analogy. And he knows it and he says it. And he's yeah. even in his voice. It's almost a little proud when he, when he says, but I dig myself out and I move forward again, but then <laughs> I keep going back and I don't know why, you know, why, why can't I just move forward? And to me, that's the vicious cycle. Right. That makes sense. Um, so uh, has he had some therapy? to uh, try to understand this? I believe so. And spiritual too. And I believe has nice. done some of the work. Um, maybe not has dug in as deep as he really needs to, but then it makes me wonder, and I'm not singling him out. I'm looking at this broadly. Others might have the same challenges, but fear of success. Cause it seems like he's, he's moving forward and then goes right back again, or he's stuck in that cycle of, I'm just, I'm not going to succeed anyway. So whatever, you know, I made a couple of steps forward. Then I just drop back. Um, you know, the, I'm not good enough mentality. Um, you know, in general, what are, what are your thoughts? Well, um, I thought I like the different ideas that you're, you know, talking about, 
um, I guess if, if I, it were me seeing this person, I would want to kind of do an assessment at the beginning to really understand what could be going on. Sure. Um, as far as root functioning, kind of like just um, mental disorders, issues that could be worked on. So that isn't happening. Like say if the person has ADHD, you know, and they're going to be forgetful or they're going to be distracted, you know, distracted or, you mm. know, not going to be able to follow through and finish or whatever. And that's something that you can get help with. I mean, um, you know, the omega threes at a certain level, you know, uh, the fish oils you can take and that can, and there's something else called eccentric, which is like a vegan version of the uh, fish oils um, for the ADHD. And of course there's medications depending on what type of ADHD you have. Um, and, you know, some are non-stimulant, some are stimulant, depending on what it is. It's like, get a deep assessment. Is this person, you know, got a problem keeping track of things and, you know, or procrastinating and why, you know, your temporal lobe can be sluggish and you just don't have a, um, you know, a radar, you know, for getting stuff done. It's not in front of your face. Like some people might have that dopamine rush. I got a task to do, you know, and some people don't, you know. Maybe they need to take the dopamine to, you know, I mean, uh, not directly. That's not a medication, but, right. you know, stimulus. or experience it. Just just do something to experience it. And, and yeah. I, I believe you might in his situation be onto something there, because a while back, I do remember him saying the word focus. Like, I can't just, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that would be to get an assessment of that, you know, go to the therapist who does, um, you know, diagnostics and, you know, like usually a licensed clinical psychologist has got that background for the uh, initial assessment diagnostics. Um, and I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Um, so familiar with, you know, I would give the Dr. Allman questionnaire, uh, ADHD questionnaire and a pulse for these different types of um of ADHD, like I mentioned, it might be more temporal lobe, the time management or the focus on this, or it could be um, a limbic thing, your emotionality, you know, you get overreacted to things and you're scattered because you got adrenaline rushing and you're not able to focus, or it could just be the main one, uh, ADHD, classic ADHD, the frontal lobes, executive functions, they're only, the brain neurotransmitters are only, you know, flowing 90%. A processing speed, not a hundred. So you're not quite thinking before acting. And that is, you know, is of course the major thing that you're, you know, that you're not focusing or remembering things as well as you could, but you can get help for all of those and more. And uh, so that you, that you do have better focus and memory because that's just one alternative. But if you've heard him say that, that focus is it, that could be a problem to look at. And there's no reason to just not go to therapy, get an assessment and say, you know, yeah, well, I'll work on myself. We all got stuff. It's every uh, it, we're either learning or we're having fun. Right. It's either going great and we're enjoying ourselves or we're learning something. So when we're at that point and it's not the fun point, then we want to say, well, what can I learn here? You know, what can I do to, it's great that he pulls himself up and he, you know, each time he gets back on track, that's great resilience, you know. Um, but when you're at that point and when you're at the breakdown, you really want to bounce into the breakthrough. So what is it? What's the breakdown from? Analyze it. What, you know, and so you can get into now a breakthrough that you've changed something so much in your life that you're right. actually not going to have that breakdown again. It's it's interesting when, and you must find this extremely interesting when you talk with somebody, you get into their life, you know, what's going on, where they've been, how they got to where they are, and then start piecing it together. Like, you know, yes. you have uh -huh. the, the ADHD, maybe he's got that, you know, maybe there's something yeah. going on. I don't know if he would even be aware, but that was, I mean, you said that, and then I, you reminded me, he said the word focus at one point. So I think he just can't dig in and stick with it. So maybe right. there's something going on there. Um, what, what is prevalent for you? And, and even, even recently talking with people, uh, you know, outside of anxiety, which is huge right now yeah. with many, um, what, what, what are you hearing? Is it more cases of ADHD, even in adults being diagnosed? 
Yes. I, I mean, well, when I do an in, initial evaluation, you know, it's called that by the coding and billing, you know, the first session when you go to therapy is called a clinical evaluation. And then it begins your therapy sessions, the second session. Um, so I basically do a very, you know, big assessment quickly. I mean, people do a lot of these questionnaires. It's like, you know, the symptom checklist, their whole history, you know, back to, they got a legal history, a psychiatric history, their substance use history, their alcohol history, their family history, their family psychiatric history, their family's health history, that, you know, educational, et cetera. Um, they're presenting complaints currently, your marital history, your relationship. So you get the whole big picture. And then I also give the ADHD test to see, and I give the, um, sometimes go through the uh, diagnostic statistical manual mental disorders and for like bipolar versus unipolar depression symptoms, go through it. Um, and I do also the, dis, uh, the dissociative experiences scale, which is for complex PTSD or the spectrum of dissociative identity disorder, not just the full blown multiple personality disorder used to be called where they're, you know, have complete blackouts between alters and believe it or not, I'm getting to a point here, um, but you can have it on a spectrum where you can be co-conscious, but still be in different modes and have used association because of having, like you mentioned, early childhood traumas and things. And then you learn to kind of split off in a sense, you know, and self-hypnotize and let another part of your brain hold this trauma, put amnesia walls around it. And then you start doing that. Like, oh, I'm at school now. I got a student part comes out. I hypnotize because you can handle stress through using dissociation. So when you do this full intake, you know, at the beginning, which really is just a, can be a 45, 50 minute session, believe it or not, because a lot of it is they're doing, you know, paper and pencil and given this and I go through it in the interview to ask all the specifics oh you you have an insomnia you know how long have you had insomnia how many hours are you getting of sleep at night etc I mean even something like catching that could be a reason why a person would not uh, be able to focus you know say they're only getting five hours of sleep at night we need a good seven eight hours of sleep to mm -hmm. not be anxious and then that's create and scatter and to just be able to have the memory and focus so basically you know when i do that i find all of these things i mean there's a quite a uh, i mean a good percentage of people i couldn't tell you exactly the percents but um i can give you the one percent which would be uh, something you might be surprised about but when I give the dissociative experiences scale, close to 30% of the people that come in my office have that at some level. Wow. I, mean, I mean, and think about it, it's complex PTSD, the early child stuff. There are a lot of people that have been through stuff as children. And, uh, but then they have symptoms like, you know, they can see themselves doing something as if they're looking at another person standing next to them. That seems like an unusual experience, but it's not that unusual. I'm saying like close to 30% of people are, are reporting that. And then you ask them, well, what do you mean? So you make sure that they understood the question. Well, I, you know, I'm, and I haven't argued with my boyfriend, but I'm standing here and I can see myself standing next to him and I can see the argument. I really don't want to be having that argument with them, but you know, I can't help it. In other words, they're not up front. The life managers come to the sessions as the host run in life is not out. The protector part has popped out and is having an argument to put down the quote enemy, you know, I call it, is just to handle stress, you know, that part that stands up for you. And but will say or do anything to put the enemy down, so to speak. Or, and so in other words, you, once you get the full big picture, uh, there's so many factors you can figure out that could be underlying the vicious cycle. Like, is it some ADHD that could be helped? And um, is it, uh, you know, do they need help for the complex PTSD so that, you know, when they're at their job, and this isn't what you told me happened with him, but, you know, say, for example, this is a client that I'm thinking of, it happened to a lot of times his uh, protector part would pop out at meetings at the job and tell somebody off, right? Well, of course, he kept losing jobs. So he's back to not having a job, vicious cycle. That's it. You know, let's, let's look at that. That's very interesting. The mm -hmm. things that 
many of us do, it sounds like we don't mean to do them, but mm -hmm. it's, you said the protector part. So there's something in his, his history that uh -huh. he is, is trying to protect them from a situation that happened in the past. Again, exactly. sub, subconscious is sitting there and exactly. then he tells somebody off at work probably doesn't mean to do it. It's not like he has a beef with that person, no. but his subconscious is saying protection and he just, you know. Pops. It pops. goes to the front and is out actively putting wow. down, yeah, the other mm -hmm. person to get him to stop being stressful. Wow. To them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right. Interesting way to look at it. And then we look at ourselves and why we do what we do and the way we interact with others, whether it's coworkers, uh, loved ones, whatever it might be, might be tied into just the protection mode. It's not that we're jer we're jerks. We're just we're, we're protecting ourselves. Wow, exactly. And it's not even that they know their mind works that way until they come in and they fill this all out and say, "Oh, well, you're meeting criteria for this. Do you feel like you switch at times and you don't? You're not in control. And mm. uh, and you know, does your wife tell you that all the time? You know, and it turns out, yes, yes, yeah. you know. Oh, okay, well, let's work on this. We'll work on your life, but let's work on your inner healing from this so that your whole selves are in harmony to in a straight line. You brought up the good mm -hmm. point about like in that part of you may be reacting still to the past situation they came, that helper would evolve to, into being to protect against back then. And then if you can reach that part, say, so, well, wait a minute. You're not back in an abusive home, you know. This is a little meeting you're having at work, you know, and you're all just discussing something. And you don't, you know, why don't you just let, you know, the host part know that he should maybe stand up or say something firmly, but let it, let it be a healthy way without insulting or um, you know, threatening somebody when you're saying what you need to say without that piece wow. of it, which might have been necessary back in the day in the home or what was role modeled in the home. Like the protector part, a lot of times gets role modeled after an abusive family member or a person that they're involved with. And that's, you know, because it looks like, well, that's how you stand up. So when I go away and mentally, you know, kind of let a part of my brain do the stand up, well, it goes and abuses somebody, you know? And so it's got to unlearn, no, wait a minute. <laughs> You didn't like it when you were little. You probably shouldn't be doing it now to somebody else, you know, but it's a whole inner process to work, therapeutic process that you have to work on to get to that point. Um, I want to go back to something you said a little while ago, or, or at least um, expound upon it. Mm -hmm. When you hear voices, now, when there's an evaluation, one of the classic <laughs> questions do you hear voices? Uh -huh. And a lot of times it's equated with, we got a problem here. You're hearing voices that are telling you to, to do things. But in my understanding, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just another side of your personality that, that may be speaking to you. What are your thoughts? Exactly. I, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Um, I mean, we all kind of have an inner, at least one inner voice, you know, kind of going on or a valued a voice. But people who have the dissociation um, are hearing voices of different parts of themselves. And sometimes if they've got it bad, it, it's so much chatter, they can't think straight. So that could cause a person not to focus and have a repeated, you know, uh, forgetting or doing something wrong, causing a life problem to keep sure. free uh you know erupting um but and then yeah. and by the way this is not you know you hear that term split personality yeah. i don't believe that is this this is just another side of you another part of you that comes exactly. through it's not multi they used to call this multiple personality disorder and they've changed it because just like you said it's not like you've got multiple people in there <laughs> right it's right like, right but they may feel they are you know i mean if this right. one comes out to play tennis, you know, it's got an expert in that. And, I mean, like Herschel Walker, uh, the book Breaking Free he wrote, came out to help people understand DID was much more common than we realized because he found out he had DID. When he finished um, doing 
his football career, then all of a sudden he it's in this book, you know, Breaking Free. Uh, and you know her Hersha Walker is, right? The Dallas, you know, and, ab- absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, he found out after football ended, he all of a sudden started going into the bathroom playing Russian roulette. And it's like, oh my God, I could kill myself, you know. I mean, so he actually finally he took himself into therapy. Turns out he'd have, of course had DID, which starts the dissociative identity disorder spectrum. He had some co-conscious, it's not like complete blackouts. It's a spectrum can all you know go down to like ADD or ADHD. What we is might, DID? I just want to make sure we, we know. Dissociative identity disorder. Gotcha. Uh, and actually people often see it and define it as borderline personality disorder it's that where Mm. you can be with a person that sometimes loves you uh, you know and you're perfect and idolized you and then the next moment their protective part is out who is you know putting you down in a rage for you abandoning them or whatever and um so it's it's so he came out to help that book was to help people understand that a lot of people who are very, you know, um, successful in life, like he was, uh, is, and um, that he, but you can have this and it can help you in some ways because you kind of have these compartments of parts of yourself where that come out and just do the job. In fact, he had a, um, a physical condition in puberty where his bones and his tendons or muscles didn't grow at the same rate. It's a, there's a certain name condition. You have to outgrow it, but you're in a lot of pain, probably in homebound instruction during that time. And he actually, because he had this disorder, if you will, the social identity disorder, he um, had a part that held the pain and would just sleep all day in his mind. And then the only time he felt the pain was when he would kind of be go to sleep and then he'd be co-conscious at that time. He would be blended with that part holding the pain and feel, oh my God, this is tremendous pain, but he'd fall asleep. That's what they was doing. So he'd sleep with that blended part. But what I was getting to at the beginning was that he was his football guy part. Once there was no football, had nothing to do. So it saw apparently a gun. He must have had a gun. and said, oh, this looks like fun. I'm going to go in the closet and start paying playing Russian roulette. This is a danger crunching activity. Football is danger crunching, adrenaline rushing activity. I got another one. Wow. He couldn't stop doing it. And then he got into therapy and then he, and found out that, oh, it's my football guy's got nothing to do, but we got to reach this part of me. And that's like, he thought it was just a compulsion. And then he finds out he's got this, you know, bigger picture to work on. And that's why they wrote the book with a lot of information about it. So we, we have like 30 seconds, but I want to ask Ooh, this question. And I was, I was going to ask it before. You got me on my and, <laughs> and you brought up borderline personality disorder. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing that a lot of therapists will just use that label when they're not really sure what somebody has or is challenged by. Right. Brief, briefly, because we're almost out of time, but I, I want to find out. What are your thoughts? Well, it's kind of a good label. The person I just always give you a de- behavioral description, but we want to go deeper. We want to go and find out the root functioning. Like it's probably in the DID and you can really help and even be cure- integrated. Nobody goes away, but you can give me a Vulcan mind, melt all your parts in harmony. It's part of a, ther- a long therapeutic process. Gotcha. And so not like you got to accept, oh, you're just stuck this way. You got this personality disorder, foundation of the house. What are you going to do about it? No, you can take it deeper and really do healing work for people. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Learn a lot today. And we we went in, in a lot of different directions, but this is stuff that challenges many of us. And how do we how do we connect with you best way? And then also even find out about your book. Yes. Um, well, you can uh, find me on Psychology Today. Um, and, uh, then it just has a link, um, and goes to my full website, which has books on it and everything. So if you just look me up, you know, and creep more on psychology today, you should be able to find everything. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for everything. And, um, always learn a lot. For- this is, this is so important for, for all of it us. It is. Yeah. 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 For people. yeah thank you, Steve. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay. I talk soon. We'll be right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay. 